Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to Animal Drawing with Alicia. This is our second session, and I'm really excited and happy to be here, and I hope that you are just as excited as I am. Today we're going to be doing some animal drawing. Um, we just started doing animal drawing on YouTube last week. Um, normally I would go to the zoo, and I was hosting a meetup there at the Los Angeles Zoo and also at Albuquerque Zoo, and I've been doing that for about two years, and I wanted to decide to... Um, to do some animal drawing online so that more people could be able to see and benefit from it. And we'll just see where it's, it's gonna lead. Last week, we did a lot of longer poses. I believe most of them were five minute poses. We might have even done a few 10 minute poses. So if you get time later on, you can check that out. We did Arctic wolves. Today, we're gonna be doing otters. No specific otters, it's actually a couple of different species of otters that I have here selected. And we're gonna do some quicker poses. And I hope that this is exciting for you because um, we're just gonna be trying a couple of different methods because this is a new, a totally new um, series that I'm doing and I'm hoping that this will benefit people. So I wanna try out a different, different types of ways and see which ways are like the most um, effective, I guess, for learning how to draw animals. And I hope that this is gonna help you to increase your drawing skill with animals and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So we're gonna do the first 10 poses as one minute poses, and then we're gonna do eight two minute poses. So this is the first image. Um, they're all, none of these images are mine. So I'm gonna just put a disclaimer out there now. These are images I found just on Google search. And I recommend that anybody who's learning and practicing to draw animals, you can just easily find hundreds of images on Google that you can sketch from. I would definitely recommend sketching photographs of them, not like the draw other people's drawings or, um, or other people's paintings. I mean, you can do that, but I mean, the best way to learn how to draw the animal is to actually get a photograph. So these are just Google images. So here's our first one out of um, 10 one minute poses that we're gonna be doing. So let's go ahead and get started. So here is the first one. Let me grab my pen and we're gonna start right now. So what I'm gonna do first, as I usually do, we'll try and get the form of the animal and see if I can get the shape going there. Really low facing eyes. I just want to get everything in the right place. That is my first concern is getting things in order. That way you can come back and go ahead and add details and that sort of thing. Try and keep your lines organic, meaning that they flow from one to the other like this is the shape and I want to keep the second shape sort of being organic with the first one that I made. That way it's more natural because life, I mean, so many animals in life are really organic shapes. Okay, that's our first one. She doesn't have to not be so loud. <laughs> okay, she's really loud, sorry about that. But we're gonna move on to the second one. These are gonna be pretty quick because they are one minute poses, but we can always come back and make more detailed drawings as we go but i just want you to feel comfortable so you don't have to feel too attached to any drawings and we'll just go through them one by one so here's the second one and starting right now so right now i'm gonna get his shape of his body and um just a little fun fact, my favorite animals. All, all the animals like in the weasel family, I'm not even sure if they're in a weasel family or in the weasel family, like bees and ferrets. And they're just, I just, I don't know, there's something about them <laughs> that I've always taken a liking to. I'm pretty sure that these, and actually I think foxes are also in the weasel. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. I need to like really, brush up on my Jack Hanna. I was really good when like, when um, Steve Irwin was on. I blame myself not knowing <laughs> more about animals now because of no longer Steve Irwin. I should totally get the box set or something. That is our second one minute timer. And I think we 
made some good progress with this one. So we're gonna move on to the next one. And it, one minute does go super quick. I can't, can't deny that. So here's another one. We're gonna do a one minute pose. And I would definitely recommend coming back and doing another um, set of these in longer poses. You can always pause and use your phone to set the timer and you can do much longer poses. But for now, we're gonna just do one minute. So here we go with our third one, starting now. And he is just like two big ovals. And that's like the beauty of these like quick poses. It's just like figuring out what the shape of this guy is first before you do anything else. And now we stick with this one. Can figure out where his legs are a little bit. I'm not sure what kind of otter this one is but he looks like he might be a river otter. River otters and sea otters are very easily um, to distinguish because river otters have a really much less, um, what's it called, what can I say? Like the really strong characteristics of a sea otter who has that big white muzzle and they also have like a really thicker front whiskers there and a much um, bigger nose, almost like a koala. I know that's really not their real relative at all, <laughs> but they do kind of, the sea otters do a little bit resemble the, uh, the um, koala. Okay, so that's one minute for that one. We're gonna move on to the next one. And a one minute pose. Start. I think this one is actually a giant river otter that lives in China. I'm not really sure, but I'm pretty sure by these white markings that he has, like over here and over here, that that's like a, um, I'm pretty sure that's like a Chinese otter. I need to like get all my facts right though. <laughs> okay, so we'll do this one minute pose starting now. I really love this one. He's really cute. They are all so cute though to me. And cute animals are are fun to draw, but they're all cute to me. I mean, I was even like telling my mom because I had this collection of books at her house still um, from years ago. And um, she, they were all like wildlife books. And she sent me like most of them, but like one was missing still. And she's like, oh yeah, there's another one with just like lizards and stuff. I don't think you want that. So I'm just gonna throw it away. And I was like, what, no way. I love the lizards and the frogs and all of them too. And I love to draw them. And I think they're really cute, even though she doesn't. <laughs> so I'm really glad that I recovered my reptile and amphibian book back. And I can use that as a resource. Animal books, if you get the chance, um, go ahead and we'll stop here. But um, animal books, if you ever get the chance to um, reference them to draw animals. I mean, they're really great. You can just um, go through just a, like your discount bookstore and they just have tons and tons of um, of animal books. And I totally recommend that, that you um, check those out and see if you can collect your own little library of animal books because they're really good resources for, for references. So here's another one. And this is a great shape. I mean, the image quality isn't that good, but I really was attracted to this nice, shape going on here. So a little one minute pose of this one and starting now. I think some of these I'm really wanting to like draw longer. <laughs> so we'll have to like do something else. I don't know. Like I wanted to experiment with different timing. So I mean I'm glad that we were trying this out. But maybe next time we'll do we'll definitely do like some more longer poses combined with short poses because it's really fun to like get into it and get to the final phase of your drawing. I want to now get sort of an angle more of his head. I can. It's a little bit tricky this one. A little bit but we can still try and figure him out. Where his Underbelly's kind of going there, his legs a little bit more tucked in. Then I can see his feet are a little bit going more back with his body. Okay, so we'll end it there for this one minute pose. 
But yeah, I really want to get more into it. <laughs> okay, so next one, and we have a few more of the one minute pulses. So we'll start with this one starting now. And he just looks like a submarine, doesn't he? he looks like it's just like bolting into the water. And I love that. I wanna nothing in in nature is like completely straight. So you wanna avoid really straight lines. Even though he looks pretty straight, I mean if I follow him along, he's like curved still. You know, his body is curved. So I mean just keep that sort of thing in mind when you're drawing animals, like nothing in nature, including all the animals, nothing is completely straight. Everything has got a little bit of a something to it. And I'm not sure where I learned that from, but I know I learned it from somewhere and it's completely true. Some art teacher somewhere must have told me that. Okay, so there's our next one minute pose. And we've got that study kind of looks like a beaver slash mouse, but okay, let's keep away with these quick poses. I'm actually um, wanting to do a painting with um, some otters, and that's also why I wanted to practice sketching otters. So I'm kind of <laughs> doing a little bit of a tool here. I'm trying to see which ones I really like, and then I'll do some more sketches and figure that part out. But for now, I just wanted to get to start feet wet a little bit with drawing otters because I'm going to do an otter painting soon. Okay, so now this is one more one more one minute pose, but we do have one more after this, and then we're going to jump to the two minute poses, and we'll see like a big gap you know, and difference between drawing one minute poses and two minute poses. So here we go, starting now. And I just wanna kind of get this front half of his body and keep going to the back. He's got like, you can tell he's got like a knee up or something here. But it's it's really hitting in his body well, and one is completely out and flowing with the rest of his body and his tail. And his tail does this nice swoop. So here we go. Okay, I think we got a lot done though for one minute. That's pretty good. I think there's just one more one minute pose left. Yeah, this is gonna be our last one minute pose and then we'll, and now, <laughs> so cute. This is our last one I post. And this one is definitely a sea otter. You can tell by his like big koala nose. Very cute. Okay, so the one minute pose starting now. But yeah, you'll be able to see a big difference with how much more you're gonna be able to get done with a two minute pose. And practicing quick drawing is good because I mean, there's, there's always benefits. I am definitely a big believer in quick drawing practice. Draw. Oh man, my TV went out. I was watching Netflix and it like just cut off on me for some reason. That's weird. I love what his paw is doing. It's like almost like his little fingers are spread out. <laughs> I love that. That's really cute. I mean, obviously, you don't. Most people, I mean, don't learn to draw just because animals are cute. But I mean, <laughs> why not also incorporate the fact that they are cute? Uh, okay, that's our last one minute pose. I do want to keep drawing him, but we'll continue. I digress. Let's continue. We're going to do some two minute poses now. Starting with this guy right here. Oh, he's another cute one. Okay, so. 
And this one, we're going to do the same thing, same kind of technique. If you want to try just using color outline, you can do that. I'm just doing a form, and I can actually, for the first one, I will actually show you. It doesn't really work as well on digital. It works really, really nice with um, watercolor. But just for the sake of me wanting to show you a new technique, I'm going to do it. Let me try that a little bit later. That wasn't. Okay. So I'm going to get a nice little brown color like his fur. And I'm going to actually do this one sort of like getting his form first. So let's give it a try. Okay, too many bows starting right now. So with doing this, I might start with a different sort of a... I might... I could definitely use a much bigger brush, but that's okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and try and add some line before I run out of time. So I'm going to get his body in a little bit. I can't see his back leg, so I can kind of imagine it, but I don't want to imagine it too much because I don't want to throw it off at this stage. I might try later on using other images to help me fill in the gap where I'm missing um, parts of his body that are cut off by the photograph. And that's totally fine too. If it was an animal I was really used to drawing, I might just do it just from memory, like a dog or a cat or something, but just because not incredibly familiar with the back legs of an otter, but I would rather use a photo reference. Once you become really familiar with the animal type, you can just draw them right off the top of your head with no problem. I mean, you can kind of try and do that with any animal, but it's not going to be nearly as accurate. And sea otters also have a much bigger like muscle area, not just the nose, but also the muscles a lot bigger than a river otter. That was quick. So that was our two minute pose. Sorry that um, the little like color thing didn't work as well as I wanted it to. It works a lot better, like I said, with watercolor because it's, it spreads and it moves, but it's a little bit different with digital. Well, it's a lot different with digital, but um, I still wanted to give the technique a try. Okay, so we're gonna do this one as well, two minute pose. Okay, let's get this going, starting. If I can get my phone or not, starting now. <laughs> okay, so there's the head, I wanna put that in there and get a nice shape going. See this one arm kind of reaching out, and I want to like try and at least connect his shoulder so it's a little bit accurate. And then he's got this other arm, which I want to kind of at least figure out where his shoulder would fall. That foot goes back, or forearm, whatever you want to call it. I can just barely see the top of his tail. Not a whole lot I can see there. I don't know what the natural predator of otters are, but I'm sure they have one. I mean, I would assume, like, in the ocean, the sharks and things like that. But I don't know if they live in areas that have alligators or things like that. I mean, I'm assuming that they might have a natural predator, but I don't know what it is. 
Jeez, I really need to brush up on my artifacts. I realize that I'm quite <laughs> behind on the. This looks a little bit bear like, actually. Okay, so that's two minutes. We actually got a lot done in two minutes in this one. I'm good. Okay, here's another one. It's a really good shape. So we're going to start with two minute pose starting now. Keep a nice fluid shape for the whole thing. That looks nice. I want to get like a nice thing going in here. And I saw this thing with like, it was done with fish. It was like this painting I saw and it was like these fish like going in a circle, like all together. And I was like, oh, that's really neat painting. I want something like that. But I want like, I started to think about it more and I was like, yeah, I think I would want mine with like something with an animal that I really like even more. And like, I wanted to do like this ocean type of theme. So I was like, hmm, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> and sort of like when I was like, okay, I'm gonna do a DIY project. I wanted to like start painting again anyway, because I've been doing mostly digital drawings for the past, I wanna say about two years, I've been doing mostly digital drawings other than my zoo drawings that I do with watercolors, but doing actual like paintings on campus, it's been a long time. So I wanted to get back to that. So that's what I came up with, doing the otters. I really think it's gonna be a fun little project. Like everything about the way they're shaped, just like I designed it at the timer, but everything about the design is just like done to just make them thrive, it just seems like. They're like little submarines. That's how they look like to me. <laughs> oh, this one is good. He's like in action. Okay, he's actually getting the fish. So that's good. We got a little bit of ginger piece here. So we're going to do another two minute pose starting now. And I'm excited to draw this one, so I didn't wait long. <laughs> Between poses there, this one is, looks like really fun. I want to separate the top part of his torso from the lower half, which is going in an opposite direction. So separating it into two halves kind of makes it a little bit easier to break it down, I think, sometimes. And I kind of always start the head with like an oval type shape or a round shape, but like slightly oval. And I kind of get his head going a bit long. Okay. Trying to figure out his movement here. Bit complicated more than I thought it was going to be. We're trying to problem solve and figure out okay, how is he moving? It's all part of the joys of drawing, trying to figure out how <laughs> the creature or the person is moving in space. That way, you can actually capture it. If you don't understand like how they're moving, then you'll be able to like replicate it. And gosh, that's so important with animation too. Obviously. Almost like he's got his fingers, like he's like almost got it, like he's got his fingers clutched. Barely see into this 
wave that he just created from diving in. You can see that he just dived in the water. It's just out of reach. He probably got it in the end, I'm sure. Okay, so that was a good two minutes. Let's go on to the next one. And this one is also definitely a sea otter. So we're gonna pick right up on this one and we've got three more poses after this. So two more poses starting right now. And I wanna, this is a nice shape. It's very, it's in the color already. It's so nice how he's just like, in this position where everything is clear on his body. I think that's like the biggest thing that like makes the drawing easier to go. And everything is clear on um, the form and you can see where to go that just makes your life so much easier. So try and find angles when you look for um, reference photos and you're practicing to get better at drawing whatever it is that you enjoy drawing the most. Um, Try and get reference photo where everything is really clear. You can tell like where the leg is, where the arm is. It's like human or animal it just makes your life incredibly easier. And you don't end up with like really like wonky, weird looking drawings. And he's doing sort of a weird thing with this one back leg. He's got like one coming up, but I mean, it's fine. It's just, He's, he's doing the most, <laughs> and I'm not mad at him for it. He's doing the most, but he's an otter. He can do that. But yeah, like, getting a clear image is everything. And I know, obviously, I picked these images before this session, and some are clearer than others, but just as your own reference, it's, it's a lot, it makes life easier when your images, your resource images are clear. Okay, there's another two minute pose. Pretty good. Got a lot done that time. Okay, so here's our next one, obviously a sea otter. And I think maybe for the last one, we'll do like one four minute pose instead of a, uh, yeah, I think maybe for the last one, we'll do a one four minute pose, just one that's a little bit longer that will make our life a lot better, I think. I think. <laughs> just one that we get a little bit more time on. Okay, a two minute pose, and then we'll do a four minute pose. How about that? So here we go. Start. This one is also pretty lined up nice. I know that the sea otters, that this one is, love to eat oysters. So at least I got a little bit of my information correct, hopefully. I'm not sure what else they eat other than oysters, but I see them eating a lot of those. Or what are those things called in like the weird shells that I always see them eating? Maybe those are not oysters. What are they called? I don't know what they're called. Oh well. It's like it in a spiky thing right there. Maybe that's not, that's not I don't know. I don't eat seafood, I'm not sure what they're called. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Let's keep going. And he is, looks happy, he really does. That is muscle up here. Trying to keep everything flowing organically. That means like one thing leads to another thing to the other thing. You try and keep that in mind when you're making your drawings. I think definitely it's nicer to at least have one longer pose in the end so you feel like you've got a little bit accomplished. It can feel like you didn't do much when you have all like really loose sketches. I get that. So 
So we'll do one longer pose for the end, even though it's not that incredibly long. I think it'll help us feel like we're doing something. <laughs> I'm not really good at water bikes. Well, I know you're not supposed to say you're not good at stuff, but but sometimes we're just not. So I have to figure that, figure out the water effects that come over his body. Okay, I can't do that in 10 seconds. <laughs> I'm just making it worse. <laughs> so here we go. And we're going to do this last four minute pose. He's really red colored too. Purple. Okay, so here he is, our last little guy. And we're going to draw him for four minutes, I'm starting right now. He's kind of cute, actually. And I love these little holes that he's doing here. Let's just swing into the tail this time. Before I get to the legs, a lot of times I'll pause there and do the legs this time. I want to just keep the, keep the flow going, and I think I can kind of imagine it. Doing like a little light twist or something, it looks like. And here he is here. That's very cool. And this one actually looks like a river otter, but I don't know, it kind of looks different too. I don't know what this one is. I'm not always sure. Yeah, I don't think he's just a regular river otter, it's something else. I'm not But yeah, he's definitely not like a regular otter, but I don't think he's a regular sea otter either. And so I have to, I'm gonna have to figure that one out. I'm not sure what he is. And we make room for his arm over here. If he does have some arm space, come this way. So like claw like feet right here. So I'm trying to figure that out. Keeping the shapes fully as possible. I'll add some color onto him as well if we have a little bit of time. We don't have much time right now. I just want to add like some texture or something. So it's not just like plain. Let's see if I can do it. Probably won't be able to add much, but we'll see what we can do. And right now I'm just using like a soft brush in Photoshop. It's not a fancy brush or a special brush or a brush you have to buy. It's just a regular soft brush. That kind of just helps me to figure him out a little bit more, understand him a little bit better. As I'm, I'm obviously I'm not done with the drawing, but I still want to figure this guy out a little bit. With the little bit of time that we do have. Ah, uh, that's our time. So I'm gonna work a little bit more on him 
and you can continue to work on your guy and then we'll meet again later in the week and um if nothing else we'll meet again next monday for more animal drawings i hope to see you here next monday um there's no solid time yet for what time um animal drawing is going to be but as of now it's every monday so i mean if you want to check tuesday morning if that's a good time for you that's fine but um thanks for showing up and i'm so glad to be here with you and i hope you had a good time i sure did have a good week see you next time bye bye